live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. It's still cool out there, but the sunshine we saw today makes up for it. Looking through our sky cam, we're seeing a pretty nice day out there. But if we're headed to a baseball game this evening, Robert, what can we expect? Uh, pretty much the same. Some mostly sunny skies across the north, a bit more cloudiness across the south. And that's where we're seeing the cooler temperatures right now. A mix of some 50s and of some 60s. 64 Cavalier Grand Forks and right here in Fargo. 61 Thief River Falls, Detroit Lakes, Wapton and Jamestown. And 59 Fidette, Bemidji, Wadena. And in Gwinner, winds generally light around 5 to 15 miles per hour, mainly out of the east. A bit of cloud cover again across the south, and we're showing just a little bit of rain across southern portions of the valley. Most of that not reaching the ground until you get down into parts of South Dakota and southern Minnesota, but can't rule out an isolated sprinkle across the extreme southern portions of the valley. Here in Fargo, we stay partly to mostly cloudy with temperatures slowly cooling on off through the 7, 8, and 9 o'clock hour. Those temperatures dipping down into the mid 50s by nine. Another chilly night tonight, but we continue our warm up as we head through the weekend, and we'll show you those high temperatures for your Mother's Day weekend in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. Thousands of fans gathered at Newman Outdoor Field today, including kids enjoying the Red Hawks game, either with parents or with classmates. And as Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz reports, teachers and parents could rest easier knowing they and their kids were better guarded with a wider protective net. You almost can't see it here, but come in a little closer and fans watching a Red Hawks baseball game are better protected than they look. It's, it's a stronger net, but it's thinner. It's also a little bit easier to see through to help enhance the environment. Last year, the team's management, with the financial help of the city of Fargo, became one of the first teams in its league to upgrade to a larger and less visible net. Some of the fans initially were, were a little hesitant in our season ticket holders. They didn't want to be... Um, interrupted by the net. But Red Hawks president Brad Thom says many came around after a young girl was injured in the face when the twins were visiting the Yankees last September. Thom says ballpark figure, the net covers nearly 2,000 more fans now than it did originally. We have uh, the ability to protect just about 4,000 fans from the screaming line drives. About 80% of our of our fans now are protected by this. And parents say they can relax a bit more at the games. Less balls get in the stands. Uh, I think that's mostly a good thing. Uh, there's lots of kids and families and not everybody's paying attention. Kids tend to not really pay attention to the game. They care more about the food. So it's nice that it's a little bit safer so you don't have to worry so much about those fly balls. General Manager Matt Rouse says at the end of the day, the fan safety is what matters most. It can be a cost issue. Uh, it is pretty expensive to do this stuff, but when it comes to fan enjoyment, we wanted to take that step. In Fargo, Rose Iskivis, Valley News Live. We're told the new net is 10 feet higher all the way around and at least 100 feet longer on each side. Two sisters accused of supplying fentanyl that led to an overdose death in Grand Forks have reached plea agreements in the case. 40-year-old Kelly Jo Nelsrud and 37-year-old Holly Sobey are charged in federal court with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute a controlled substance resulting in serious bodily injury and death. Court documents show the death occurred back in January. The charge carries a maximum penalty of life in prison and a minimum mandatory sentence of 20 years. Plea hearings have not been set. An elderly man missing from Alexandria, Minnesota, may be in our area. Police say 79-year-old Eugene Harstead hasn't been in contact with friends or family for a week. He was involved in a minor car crash in Alexandria last Friday and is known to have passed through towns in west-central Minnesota over the weekend. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office has now released a new picture of Harstead filling his truck with gas in Wapaton on Monday, and they believe he was also possibly in Wilkin County. Harstead is likely driving his 1998 teal-colored Chevy Silverado pickup, Minnesota Plates 545-UUA. If you have any information, contact the Douglas County Sheriff's Office or call your local law enforcement. A school bus driver from the Minneapolis area is accused of texting while driving and looking up jokes on her cell phone. 39-year-old Brenda Karsten is charged in Anoka County District Court with more than a dozen misdemeanor and gross misdemeanor charges of child endangerment. Her first court appearance is June 6th. Authorities say the charges stem from video and audio taken on the bus in Blaine on February 6th, showing Karsten driving erratically and children moving around the bus while it was on the road. 
Karsten allegedly had both hands off the steering wheel and was looking up your mama jokes on her phone. At one point, authorities say she handed the cell phone to a student to read the jokes over the bus intercom. People in Hunter, North Dakota, are making plans to rebuild the community-owned bar that was destroyed by fire in late April. City Councilman Dustin Moen says that insurance should cover the cost of rebuilding the CNI bar on Main Street. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. Moen says the bar opened in 1945 and was a local landmark. Grand Forks City leaders say crews will be closing South 20th Street from 15th Avenue South to 17th Avenue South this Monday for a small project. Crews will be doing utility repairs in the area. Detour signs will be posted. South 20th Street is expected to be back open by Friday, weather permitting. It's a big weekend for anglers. They are stocked up and ready to hit the lakes tomorrow for the Minnesota Fishing Opener. The opener not only serves as the start of the summer travel season, but it promotes the state's many recreational opportunities. Fishing is a key part of tourism, one of Minnesota's largest economic sectors. So fishing is big business in Minnesota, disproportionately big in rural Minnesota where we don't have the industry that we have in the Twin Cities. Um, um, angling in Minnesota contributes over $4 billion to the state economy. More than 500,000 anglers will take part in the fishing opener this weekend in Minnesota. And with thousands of people expected to hit the lakes, many may walk away with an injury instead of a fish. Essentia Health has some advice on removing a hook from a finger. They suggest using the string yank technique. Doctors do not recommend pushing the hook through your skin and cutting the barb because that could cause infection. Also, don't try to remove a fish hook that is deeply embedded in the skin or near an eye. If you think you may need more attention, go to the nearest urgent care or emergency room. To see about the hospital-recommended removal technique, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. Today, a group of students at Carl Ben Eilson Middle School got to put their hard work to the test. Eighth grade students who are enrolled in the automation and robotics course used their classroom knowledge as they raced CO2 powered mini cars they designed and assembled. Using scientific and engineering principles, more than 120 students have each handcrafted wooden cars for aerodynamic efficiency and speed. They learn that they can do things that they've never done before, never thought they could. And just seeing the look on their face, seeing how much they grow and get more confidence is amazing. Design concepts, traditional materials, new technology and speed will all play a role in bragging rights of the fastest car. This is a grand and proud day for parents and students alike. It is graduation day at MSUM. And today, some 900 Dragons are getting the degrees they have worked so hard to earn. Among the student speakers today, Ashley and Isaac Skolsky from the Thief River Falls area, they have known each other since middle school and today are graduating from college together. They were married about a year ago, and now they and all the other college graduates need to deal with paying off those student loans, and they'll have a lot of company. A new report finds 44 million Americans are carrying $1.5 trillion in student loan debt. That means the average student loan borrower has something over $37,000 to pay back. NDSU and UND have their graduation ceremonies set for tomorrow. Boston Dynamics, the company voted most likely to spawn the robo-apocalypse, has released a new video showcasing the latest abilities of its synthetic creations. A freakishly realistic human robot running effortlessly through grassy fields and managing challenging terrain. From previous videos, we know that the humanoid robot Atlas is capable of some incredible physical feats, such as stacking boxes, performing backflips, and occasionally providing some comic relief. Up until this point, however, we have never seen this bipedal machine do its work outside.